Nyogtha, hunter of the red abyss. The thing which should not be. Today we're exploring the last Igu. Igu? From the Great Old Ones Pack 4. That duplicative monster, Nyogtha. Should not be. He can be summoned to Earth's surface through certain secret caverns and fissures, and sorcerers have seen him in Syria and below the Black Tower of Leng. Neogtha is the creation of Henry Kuttner, first appearing in 1937, the Salem Horror. He is an amorphous black substance that makes me wonder if he's the inspiration for Armis the black goo that killed Lieutenant Yar in The Next Generation. Um, Neogtha is represented by not one, but two units, both identical in more ways than one. Uh, let's look at how he functions. To awaken Neogtha, you must have your Great Old One in the same area with a controlled gate and pay six power. When you do, you gain control of Neogtha and you place both units in the area containing your gate. Each of his units have a combat rating of four if you initiate the combat and only one if you did not. Its ongoing ability is called From Below and this reads like so. Neogtha is two units. Any common action involving one can be applied to the other simultaneously as part of the same action at no extra cost. When one moves, so, do, so can the other for free. When one captures a cultist, so may the other for free. If battle is declared in one's area, you can also declare a battle in the other's area for free. You only lose this loyalty card if both have been killed. Okay, so this is a both simple and worth discussing a few points. The rules here say that you can initiate, well, then the rules in general say you can only initiate one combat per area on your turn. So there isn't any craziness here of allowing two combats in the same area. Um, that's important. This dynamic changes the net result of a few actions. Capturing a cultist, which is normally a net result of zero for you and a loss of one power for your enemy, with Neogtha becomes a net gain of one for you at a cost of one for your enemy. Combat normally costs you one per combat, but now it's one per two combats. You can capture two different players' cultists or combat two different players, as there isn't any rule requiring you to target the same player with these actions. Now, what about a spellbook? In order to gain his spellbook, you need to have Neogtha survive a battle against an enemy Great Old One. Because you have two Neogtha units, you can afford to be a bit riskier with Neogtha, Neogtha than other Igus. So this is pretty reasonable. All right, what is it? Nightmare Web, ongoing. If one of the Neogtha units is in your pool, you can awaken it for two power placing it in any area in which you have a unit. So what we have here is an expensive Igu, six power, which delivers quite a bit more punch than some other Igus when they're together, but is more useful when they're apart. Further, if one half of him dies, you can resummon him for pretty cheap if you have a spellbook. If you keep it alive for a while and are able to leverage from below, he should pay for itself fairly quickly, but if it dies or you aren't able to leverage its free actions, at best it'll be a net zero, otherwise it might even be at a loss compared to some other Igus you could have summoned instead. 
What stands out to me is that this is a good Aigu for teaching inexperienced players to guard themselves. Inexperienced players have a tendency to fail to defend their gates. Powers like dreams can be used to help teach people to not leave their gates unguarded. Neogtha is another lesson waiting to be learned, especially considering that as an Aigu, it can capture a cultist even if a monster is defending the gate. This effectively removes control of a gate as monsters typically lack the ability to control gates. Ignoring uh, Black Goat. What about the neutral spellbooks? Neogtha multiplies the benefits of any pre-battle or post-battle abilities that affect battles that Neogtha is in. Consequentially, shriveling is potentially more effective and possibly more risky for Neogtha. Neogtha can effectively remove two units per round using shriveling if they are in different battles. The ability to remove two units per turn can force another player to waste more power and turns summoning and moving units back into place. On the other hand, a sudden surge of additional power is pretty risky to give another player, particularly players who need large amounts of power to activate spell books or summon goos. Now what about Undimensioned? Is it more useful with Nyoktha? I feel like it is. It gives you free movement to spread out. Well, Nyoktha gives you free movement to spread out. While Undimensioned then lets you move the rest of your units towards one or the other. It's not like an utterly amazing advantage or combo, but the ability to feint and move your strongest units towards where your enemies aren't is very Sun Tzu. Now, at this point in these videos, this is where I go through each faction and look for possible advantages or disadvantages of, of each faction with Neogtha. Um, well, let's, let's just do it. Black Goat. Black Goat is a combat heavy faction and often has excess power. As such, you're more likely to be able to afford Neogtha than some other factions. Having two Aigus for the price of one might help you to maintain your large area of controlled gates, but the problem is they aren't particularly good defensively, so you need to make sure you're the initiator of combats. Now, this is a problem in the early part of the game but towards the middle when you have all of your spell books and gain combat as an unlimited action, it becomes much more feasible. Crawling Chaos. The ability to move two different Aigus for the price of one combined with the ability to fly two spaces per movement is pretty powerful allowing you to have Neogtha join Narlatotep in his misadventures of trying to assassinate other Great Old Ones. The downside is that extreme upfront cost. Arthur Daphos, uh, one of the subscribers fans, he wrote in saying that in his recommendation you should look for opportunities as Crawling Chaos when you've gotten lucky with Harbinger or rolled a lucky six for 1,000 forms. Wait, people don't actually roll sixes for 1,000 forms, do they? Because that's, that's pretty sick. I have a hope now. I have a, I have a personal dream. Okay. Great Cthulhu. This is honestly a little broken. Neogtha is excellent for a variety of reasons. One, it's easier to get Neogtha's spellbook by using Submerge to move a large force against another Great Old One. Second, once you gain your spellbook, it only costs you two power to resummon Neogtha, 
which also gives you an Elder Sign. Two power for one Elder Sign that gives you an average of 1.5 Doom points is an excellent return on investment. And that's what you're looking for. Looking at it from a combat perspective, spending two power for a unit that gives you four combat dice while attacking is also a great combination. Uh, this seems to be pretty much a given for Great Cthulhu, so if you can grab him, do it. Opener of the way. Neogtha doesn't bring much to this faction. Personally, I would be unlikely to spend so many resources for so little gain unless I had an excess amount of power and wanted to gain an advantage during combat. Which, which kind of makes sense for opener. Sleeper. Okay, now this is a bit of a stretch, and I don't know if you can pull it off, but bear with me. Energy Nexus allows you to take an action before a battle occurs. That means that if you bring one wizard along with Neogtha, you can do something crazy like capturing a cultist. So, Neogtha, well that doesn't make any sense. Let's go boom. There. You move, capture cultists using energy matrix, and then combat. Ancient Sorcery allows you to copy Great Cthulhu's power and gain the same advantage with Neogtha that Great Cthulhu has. This isn't necessarily like as great as the neutral advantage that Great Cthulhu has, but it isn't totally worthless. Unlike the Cho Cho. If for some reason you wanted to play your faction in a combative manner. Sure, why not? Bring the Oaktha along. But let's be real for a moment. Your job is to turtle. You're not supposed to play the game. You're supposed to sit there as Chocho, -cho, looking innocuous, and then tell everyone, hey, I'm turning over my Elder Signs, I win. That's what you're supposed to do. If you fail to look innocuous, you get destroyed. That's what, that's what happens. So at best, you could use Neogtha to discourage people from getting close enough to you, but good luck. Windwalker. Ithaqua's faction doesn't gain some of the advantages of Neogtha, but hear me out. When you move Ithaqua, you can move any or all units in the area with him at no additional cost. This means you can move your other Neogtha unit as well as long as one of your Neogthas are with Ithaqua. I think this is a pretty nice advantage as now you can move two batches of nastiness, initiate two waves of, of destruction, etc. Like it's, it's pretty nice. And if it doesn't work that way, let me know why not. Yellow Sign. When I play Yellow Sign, I want people to leave me alone. It's not like the Chocho. Chocho sit. Yellow sign, I wander the world. Yell with yellow sign, I use my Byaki, and he was not to be named, to discourage people from fighting me. But, though I don't use yellow sign in a very combative fashion, and I would be hard pressed to justify the extra cost for this Aigu, it's not totally crazy. The Screaming Dead combined with being able to take additional actions means you're potentially doing a lot of simultaneous things for less than normal costs. If anyone has used Neogtha to good effect with Yellow Sign, post down below. And that's Neogtha. I like him. I think he's a nice, straight, straightforward, combative Aigu. You guys know I like Igus that change things up and you know whatever, but you don't want to have a bunch of things that, that change things up. You just need some combative things out there too. What do you guys think? When you include him in a game, 
Do people use him or leave him unsummoned? Because I always know when a neutral unit is less than interesting, when a couple games go by and no one's bothered gaining a particular unit's loyalty card. Um, now, I'm still waiting on a large crate of Cthulhu Wars items to arrive in the mail. So until then, my next Cthulhu Wars video will be from the Ramsey Campbell's Horrors Box 1. If anyone has any strategies you think I should use with those units, I would love it if you shared them with me. Please write them in, either on Facebook, YouTube, wherever, Twitter, we're everywhere. Um, write them in, I'll give you credit, and that's it. I uh, appreciate everyone. Please click like, click subscribe, um, hit that bell. I'm really trying to hit a thousand subscribers, so I will be giving out prizes at 800 and 1,000 subscri uh, subscribers. So it'll be something cool, zany, and uh, probably overly pricey board games, because that's how I do things. All right, bye guys. Because you have, <laughs> because you have two great, two Neogtha units.